Hey guys, it is Danny and welcome to this update video on the tropics and in this video we're going to be taking a look at our systems across the eastern pacific and atlantic basins and we're also going to be taking a look at the current persistent conditions and if more development is to be anticipated in the atlantic basin before the end of the hurricane season. And so before I go into details... <music> Alright, and also guys, my first video on my new channel is going to premiere later this morning. So the link in the description and or pinned comment will take you straight to it so that you can set a reminder. Alright, so let us start off with the Eastern Pacific. And so we're seeing here that we have two disturbances, well, two systems actually. We have a depression, Tropical Depression 18, and we also have a disturbance highlighted in red, which is designated as Invest 94E. So let us take a look at these systems individually. So first up is Tropical Depression 18, and so we're seeing here on the cone forecast that this depression has sustained winds of 35 miles per hour, and it is accelerating westward at 14 miles per hour. So it is not expected to imminently develop into a tropical storm, but it probably might by some time on Monday, and it could last as a tropical storm through to the midweek but afterwards it is expected to encounter some unfavorable conditions in terms of the wind shear and that is going to induce weakening and dissipation of the system and so we're seeing that by the end of this week on friday this is expected to become a post-tropical cyclone so fortunately this is not expected to be a threat to land as it is going to be accelerating westward in the eastern pacific and now let's take a look at our disturbance and so we're seeing here that it is given a high 80% chance to potentially develop into a tropical cyclone during the next five days. And this has very limited time as well, but it is taking that window of opportunity to get in shape because after about probably by today or so, conditions will start to get really hostile that are going to prevent any further development of this. But the system is developing quite nicely. So let's take a look at it on sunlight. All right, and so here we have it. And we do have that area of a very deep convection associated with Invest 94E. So it could become a short line depression uh, probably sometime by later today or so. But as I said, after today, things are expected to become a little bit too hostile to enable any further development of this system here. And so this is not expected to be a threat to land during the next couple of days. And so let us take a look at the wind shear across the eastern Pacific. And so the different colors, they indicate the favorability of the shear. And so the green means favorable, the yellow means neutral, and the red means unfavorable. And we're seeing here that we have our depression being in a region of favorable shear. So it will remain in a region that is going to enable some intensification of the system during the next couple of days. And we have Invest 94E accelerating into more hostile conditions, so it really has a very limited time to get in shape because this strong wind shear is really going to cut off the thunderstorms associated with the system preventing an intensification of the system so during the next couple of days both of these systems are not expected to be threats to land as they're going to be making their way around in the eastern pacific and so let us go ahead and take a look at what is expected for uh, both our depression and invest 94e and then we're going to move on into the atlantic basin all right so in terms of the model intensity guidance for tropical depression 18 we're seeing here that we have a majority of the available models agreeing that this will potentially strengthen into a weak tropical storm and if it does acquire tropical storm status it will acquire the name sandra which is the next name to be used for the eastern pacific and uh, None of these models are shown as becoming something very significant. And in terms of Invest 94E, we have most models not expecting that this will achieve tropical storm status. And again, that is all due to the small window of opportunity that it has left to intensify into a tropical cyclone. And so now let's go ahead and take a look at what is going on over in the Atlantic. All right, and we're seeing here that we have one system across the basin, which is Wanda, which is quite close to the Azores. So we are not seeing any more disturbances that are marked by the National Hurricane Center. And things have been like this for quite some time now. And actually, as the season comes to a close, uh, we're not expecting much more development. But let's see what is going to be happening during the next couple of weeks. All right, so let us take a look at the satellite imagery of Wanda. And we're seeing here that we're not seeing much in terms of organization of 
the cyclone here and it is expected to transition into an extra tropical cyclone by later today or tonight so Looking at the cone forecast for the system, we're seeing here that Wanda is expected to rapidly make its way up to the northeast and it is currently doing so at 17 miles per hour, but that increase in its acceleration is expected as we're going to be heading into the early part of this week and we could have the system dissipated before it gets a chance to make its way quite close to Ireland. And so after Wanda, nothing much is really anticipated in terms of tropical development in the Atlantic and that is all due to the unfavorable conditions that will uh, persist across the basin during this off-season time. And so let us take a look at those conditions. Alright, so first up we have the Saharan dust map and so we're seeing here that uh, we have the different color sets indicate how dense the dust is. The light yellow shade indicate that there is not a lot of dense dust but as we head to the orange and the red there is more dust present in the atmosphere and that prevents any source of tropical development or rainfall activity overall because it infiltrates that moisture and dissipates all those thunderstorms and so most of the eastern caribbean is being affected by the Saharan dust of uh, the Lesser Antilles, Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, and parts of Hispaniola are being affected. So those areas are likely receiving some very hazy conditions as of right now due to this Saharan dust here. And this is a major inhibiting factor when it comes on to tropical development, uh, especially in the main development region. And so now looking at the wind shear map for the Atlantic, we're seeing here that we have favorable shear extended across portions of the eastern and south central Caribbean. And actually when it's not one thing, it is the other because this would provide a window of opportunity for any little system or wave that's trying to make its way across the region and develop. But we have the Saharan dust which is extended across that section of the Caribbean. So that is now going to still prevent any development taking place even though the shear might be favorable because we have another unfavorable factor setting in. So during the next couple of days no development of any new tropical cyclones is anticipated and we could probably see maybe another subtropical system develop before the end of the month but this is basically it for the hurricane season for the Atlantic Basin when we look at it and so looking at the satellite imagery of the basin right now we have that cold front extending across portions of the caribbean going down to central america and being out in the atlantic and this is expected to dissipate eventually as it's going to be making its way to the southeast and so guys that is really it for this update video on the tropics and so if you found it to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can also share your thoughts with me in the comments or ask a question i will try to respond as best and as soon as i can and just remember to always be weather wise.